Hey my loves! Today I'm going to be reviewing for you the Too Faced Semi Sweet Chocolate Bar Palette. This is the sequel to the release from last year, I think, which was the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. I am going to be comparing the two, but mainly I want this to be a dedicated review of this bad boy. Um, I was so excited when I heard that they were coming out with a sequel because I actually got my chocolate bar palette back in October. A really good friend of mine was not using hers, and I was so, so, so excited to get the opportunity to try it. I fell in love. The shades in the original chocolate bar are very much so right up my alley. I love me some warm neutrals. Um, that's just kind of the color scheme I tend to gravitate towards. So when I heard that they were releasing an even warmer toned version of this, I was a little bit, I was both surprised and extremely excited. Excited as those warm neutrals are what I personally gravitate towards, but I felt like the last one was quite warm toned as well. So... I, I was just a little bit surprised. Um, I thought that perhaps they would come out with a cooler tone version, um, like Kat Von D actually did for her spring collection with the Inner Cellar palette, which I I actually am going to be reviewing really soon as well. Absolutely gorgeous selection of colors and I will say it is, you know, slightly warmer in tone um, than the last palette for sure. In this palette you get 16 total eyeshadows and one of the things that I love the most about it is that you have two much larger shadows. So these are about twice the size of the normal pans and these are considered the highlight colors. You have both a matte and a shimmer in this particular palette. I was going to say this year but I don't think that this is going to be like an annual release. Sorry, I know I'm like showing you everything behind the scenes with that mirror. What I like about that is it really increases the um, longevity of your makeup and it kind of ensures you're not going to run out of anything too quickly. If you're like me, you go through those highlight shades so, so, so fast. And I love that they have both a matte and a shimmer dependent on what you want, what your taste is, what you're looking for that day. Um, you just have a really nice array of colors and I think it's very um, well thought out. There's not really any random ones in here. We'll get into swatches in a moment, but one more thing that I want to say before we move on. Obviously, the packaging is a bit different. If you got the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette earlier in the release, I don't really know when they changed the packaging. Again, I bought mine from a friend. It's in the thicker packaging because it's older. Too Faced has switched over to this slightly thinner style, which is more friendly for travel. It also feels so much more durable than this, whereas I feel like this could fly open and go around at any moment. This feels very weighty. It doesn't feel cheap. Um, it feels very, just, it feels secure, which is really, really, really nice. The other thing that they updated was now the shadows have the names under them. If you're anything like me, that plastic insert in the last palette came out instantly. Now there are names under the shadows. It's particularly helpful for me so that I can tell you to use like truffled or, you know, peanut butter in your crease and not just like point in the palette and have you like blindly going into it like, okay, was she using the second shadow from the right? If you are a Too Faced lover, you already know this smells like chocolate. Um, that's kind of their, not gimmick, but their signature? <laughs> Does that even make sense? They have cocoa powder in their products. I've noticed if anything, like cocoa powder almost makes shadows more easy to blend um, and it just, it doesn't like irritate my eyes in any way. I can't imagine it irritating anyone's, but it is something to just note that that smell is there. It doesn't linger. You're not going to smell it all day. You might smell it while you're putting it on, but you know, you won't smell. No one's going to come up to your eyelids and take a sniff and if they are, they're in for a real treat. I want to go ahead and get into swatches, then I will come back, we'll kind of compare the two palettes and I'll give you guys some closing thoughts. Starting with the top row, we have Licorice, which is kind of a deep, dark black. We have the Coconut Cream color, which is a matte highlight. Nougat, which is about as cool as this palette gets. It's kind of like a warmer mauve color, and it's perfect for the crease. We have the shade Truffled, which is a matte, darker brown. And Hot Fudge, which is almost like a purpley blackberry color. Um, I used this in the outer corner today, and it honestly just came off like a very purple toned brown. All of my swatches will be just one pass um, because I don't want to, you know, go in there and build it up to its full intensity. I just want you guys to see the initial pigmentation. We have licorice, which I'm a little bit disappointed in. I do wish that was darker. I wish it was blacker. I wish it was more pigmented. Um, we have the shade Coconut Cream, which is beautiful and buttery. Kind of a semi-opaque shade. Again, not the best pigmentation, but for a matte highlight, you're not really expecting that, I think. Um, we have Nougat, which once again, not swatching very well on the hand, but I have used this in the crease and it worked really, really well on the brush. We have Truffle, which is really beautiful and buttery and does not take much working with at all. Then we have Hot Fudge, so that is the first row of shades. We have Cocoa Chili, which the name of this freaking irks me. 
What is Cocoa Chili? It is a very shimmery brown with a lot of gold flecks in it. We have the shade Pink Sugar, which is a very glittery kind of baby pink. It's more neutral than anything. It doesn't lean super bubblegum pink though. Puddin, which is actually a little bit more cool tone. I didn't really think about this shade. I haven't even swatched this one yet. It is more of a purpley mauvey brown. We have one of my favorite shades, which is a blueberry swirl. We have the shade Peanut Butter and then frosting. Cocoa Chili, which I had not swatched until just now, and is actually really freaking beautiful. We have Pink Sugar, which actually does not have that much pigmentation. Um, on my skin, it just comes off as a very iridescent pink glitter, which I love, don't get me wrong, it's just something to know. Then we have Puddin, Blueberry Swirl up here, which is really gorgeous. I want this to be built up more. Um, I, I think it's a very subdued color, but that's kind of it in its full glory. We have peanut butter and frosting. On to the last row of colors, we have Rum Raisin, which I used on the lid today. And while it is a very beautiful color, I think that it's kind of lost easily once you really start blending. It is sort of a purpley brown, um, but I just don't think that the like shimmer packs on very well. It just kind of turns into like a very soft purple brown color. We have the shade Moose, kind of like that best friend color, very similar to Urban Decay Buck. Then we have the shade, what even are you? Caramel. Caramel is kind of a caramel gold. We have Bonbon, which I know they had a Bonbon previously and this is not the same color. It's more of like a coppery shade, a little bit more copper than caramel. Then we have the shade Butter Pecan, which is a really nice yellow toned shimmer. Rum Raisin, which really pretty color. I just wish the shimmer stayed more intact. Mousse, caramel, bonbon and butter pecan which is way underrated it doesn't look like much in the pan but it is freaking gorgeous once you get it on the eyes as far as it versus the original chocolate bar i do feel and sorry if i'm blinding you that the original was more neutral in tone while it was on the warmer side of things for me and my personal taste i enjoyed the color selection in the original a little bit more there are one or two dupes like peanut butter kind of seems, and I don't think that they have the same name, but it kind of seems to be kind of similar throughout the two palettes. Coconut cream is almost, well, it's a little bit more yellow in this palette, but it's very similar. Other than that, though, I mean, the shadows are fairly different. It's a much different color selection. You're going to get quite different looks out of it. What I did not experience was any fallout when I applied these on the eyes, and I used several shades. There was zero fallout, and they weren't difficult to work with. One thing I do want to mention um, that I think works out in this palette's favor, I wanted to wear this before I came and reviewed this for you guys, so I have been wearing the shadows for about four hours now, and there was like a blizzard today. So it's outside in the snow, it's raining, snowing, hailing all over my face, and I don't feel, I do feel that the shadows kind of faded, but I don't feel that they faded any more so than anything else I have in my collection, and I honestly think they stayed put better than most of the other things. So perhaps if you are looking for something kind of long wearing, you may have found your match in this because crazy temperatures. I had to touch up everything on my face except my eye makeup. My eyelashes were like halfway off. It was an event. So I definitely think it is a good palette. I think that if you are a warm neutral lover, this is really something you might enjoy. I think you get a really nice variety. I think that the palette itself is really nice. I like the packaging. I like the colors. Um, and I feel like if you have the original chocolate bar, there isn't enough overlap. There's like two shades that are kind of similar. And other than that, I don't think that there's enough overlap um, so that you might have to choose between one or the other overall thing with this is that I think it was maybe planned a little bit better than the original chocolate bar. I look at this and this pink doesn't make sense to me. This random blue right here does not make sense to me. I don't feel like it fits very well. Even this pink down here, I don't feel like it always ties in with the other shadows. Whereas with the semi-sweet, at least from my experience so far, it just seems a lot better in terms of planning. Um, the pink in here has a lot of shimmer and it is something that you can work into your look as either a pop of color or you can go lightly and use it as a neutral. It's not quite as baby pink as the one in the other palette. This blue ties in beautifully with the other colors. It is a pop, but it's not at a place, if that makes sense. I just think that there was a lot more time and a lot more effort and a lot more thought process put into this. Not that I thought that the last palette was bad because I use it almost every day. I'm certainly a fan and I will link it down below. Right now it is available at Ulta and Sephora and um, I think now at Sephora it's not just VIB and VIB Rouge anymore because I got this uh, because I'm a VIB Rouge. So 
yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found it helpful. Overall, I think that this gets a really good rating. I would give it probably in my book, and again, this is because I enjoy the color selection and also because the formula is really nice, I would give it an A. Um, I don't really dislike anything about it at all. If I had come home and it was like all completely intact with zero fading after that blizzard, I would be literally shoving this down your throat. Um, I do think it lasted really well, by the way. It is a nice palette. If you like Too Faced palettes, you will not be disappointed. If you are looking for an everyday neutral palette and you like warmer shadows, you will love it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not already. And until next time, I love you. I will see you in the next video. Bye.